Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, having me today. Uh, I'd like to thank especially uh, Professor Gu and Professor Zhang for uh, this opportunity. So my name is Song Han Niu, and today I will share one of my research on the co-working space. And the title of the, uh, my, the research is Toward the Theory of Co-working Space from a Social Technical Theoretic Perspective. Uh, this is a co-work with Professor Yang Ji Park from Georgia Western University. Okay, before starting, I would like to introduce my the research teaching overview to you, so so that you can have the better understanding, like what what, I, what I'm doing for my research and teaching. So I can say I have very strong the business discipline the background. So I got my doctoral degree in business. Uh, specialized in information technology management. And I have very strong interest in cultural and creative industries and like the new technologies. So like this, my research and teaching is basically uh, like arise uh, among those interactions between three components. For example, new business model in culture and creative industries, and new media and digital entertainment, like the combination between uh, culture, creative, and technologies, and knowledge management, customer relation management, IT management. And at the core of this intersection is how digital innovation transform business activities in cultural and creative industries. So like crowdfunding, uh, crowdfunding is like, it's my doctoral dissertation topic. And since then I have studied on the crowdfunding uh, around like the one decade. And as the professor who mentioned, like I wrote and the research uh, handbook for, for this topic as well. And the user behaviors on the online and mobile platforms in culture and creative industry, another is my main research stream so far. And currently I am developing two the new research directions. And the first one is, uh, research on digital creative enterprise. So what I mean by the digital creative enterprise here is like the combining the digital capability and the creative the competency for generating the business value. So there are, those are like some cases, uh, for example, the effects of the new digital innovation in culture and creative industries. Uh, here, like a new digital innovation include the blockchain, NFT and VR, AR metaverse and artificial intelligence and machine learning and so on. And the second the stream of this, uh, the research is how to nurture and promote the creative entrepreneurship. The working space is uh, the one of the examples and the two days uh, like talk that will cover uh, this topic. And then new business models for culture and creative industry. And the other, the new direction of my research uh, is about Chinese culture and creative industry. I assume like we have uh, some of Chinese students for today's seminar. And yeah, those are like some, I, I think like Chinese culture and creative industry ha has many like the interesting feature. So the more like uh, advanced in terms of the mobile uh, entertainment and like the mobile commerce uh, in the world. So under like this uh, like condition and uh, this context, I would like to understand the motivation and the consumption behavior of Chinese consumers into uh, cultural and creative yeah, context. Okay. Okay, here's a, a, a question. Yeah. You, um, you're now mentioning about Chinese uh, specifically, and uh, we are neighboring country uh, from mm -hmm. China, and um, we have very similar uh, characteristic, but somehow different. So could you tell us a little bit how they differ from each ethnic, uh, I mean, uh, two country? Okay, yeah, two countries. Yeah. Okay, that's a very good and profound question, I think. And I actually, I, I spent like two years in Hong Kong and like five years in Shanghai now. So I can say like, I, I have spent like seven years in like the Chinese greater like China. Mm -hmm. Area and from from my experiences, I could see like Chinese people and Korean people like quite different, <laughs> even quite though different. like yeah quite different uh, in, in many aspects. For example, 
uh, I think like Korean people is really attached in like details. So that's why I think like the many Korean content has like the, uh, the good performance in the, uh, the global the market. Uh-huh. And for like Chinese people, like they the more concerned about like some the uh, the big picture, like those like the uh, the bigger like outline. But uh-huh. I can say like from my experience, like they uh, are not that good at like uh-huh. the, uh, the managing like those like detail things. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So those are like the big difference, and I could see uh, some like differences based on like these. Uh, like the profound difference, like the uh, constant on the details or like constant like the big picture. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, thank thank you. you. Okay. So yeah, if you have any like question during my uh, presentation, please please stop me anytime so so that we can like discuss uh, those interesting points. Okay. Before starting, let me ask a question to you. So could you see any changes of organization or nature of works in the last decade? Yes, so I, I have... assume like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the answer that should be uh, yes, at least the maybe yes, right? So we could see the real like dramatical changes in organizations and the nature of works in the last decades. And yes. we can see like what organization in the past and now in the past, Organization had like some of those hierarchical like reforms from the top to bottom. And most cases we have like the pyramid shape of organizations. And for now, organizations are like more flexible and the more like flat and like the, uh, the formed the based on the functions and the base on a the project. So we can see the more flexibility uh, the here. Like same for the nature of works. In the past, we usually like the uh, the work uh, like the sitting on the desk and like the writing things and like the writing report and the report to the result to the your boss. And now the, we are working with uh, like some more advanced technology. So we are collaborating with artificial intelligence. Sometimes we are like the computing the, with the, those technologies. So we having uh some the online meetings like this so we we, we don't have the much in-person meeting now so we can see like some uh, changes in the nature of works as well so here are like some findings from the uh, literature so we actually could see expansion of workers who are physically distant from their employers and colleagues so we can see as many examples here Remote work, the work from home, this is quite common like during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and telecommuting and virtual teams are like quite old uh, concept now. And we also can see a uh, new organizational concept and forms, especially in organization literature. Suppose so the bu- bureaucratic organizations, which means like the uh, like out of the, uh, those hierarchical uh, like the forms, and organizational fluidities and semi-formal organization. Those are like the new form or a concept of organizations for the new era of digital innovations. I have a question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, actually, uh, this seminar, uh, the student here uh, pretty much uh, tourism and hospitality area and field. Mm-hmm. So they are not good at uh, about the structure of organization in a form level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let me ask, uh, the, like you mentioned the keyword organizational fluidity. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I can guess what that is, mm-hmm. but yeah. you know, student maybe uh, doesn't understand the organization yeah. plur- plur- pluricity. Can you can you describe a, a bit more about that uh, concept, organizational plurality? Okay. okay. So basically, the this concept is the uh, the uh, actually in the past the form of organization is quite the rigid, which means very fixed, and they never like change it for the uh, whole year, or, like for the whole like decade. Mm-hmm. But the uh, nowadays, like 
uh, like the organization is like yeah, like the moving things, and they mm -hmm. like quite like yeah, sort of the flowing mm -hmm. of the the uh, process and flowing of the work. Mm -hmm. And the concept of organization like fluidity is uh, indicating like these very specific characters of organizations, like mm -hmm. they like the moving together and they flowing like those information and knowledge throughout the whole organization, so that they they, they moving like living things. Okay, the flexible and agile structure, yeah. but information yeah, right, is right. spreading out and fluid, fluid, fluid. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. That's Thank correct. You. Okay. Thank you for the question. Yeah, and the digital transformation definitely the one of the, the big drive driving like the forces for these uh, changes, and especially industry 4.0. Because of those like new network technologies such as like 5G and Internet of Things, everything is like connected, and we just can like generate a new value from these new network technologies. And these are like some the, the real changes that the business enterprises are having now, uh, because of these uh, like the new technologies or like digital transformation. So we can see like the lower transaction and coordination cost and the location independence. So the people who work from home and they can work from like anywhere that they want. There is no big problem with this uh, approach. And as we already discussed the uh, organization, like they getting like flat and they getting like flexible. And because of like these changes, uh, the more power that could be uh, like the move to the real like the uh, project and to the real like the uh, the workers so that they can make their own decision. And because of this aspect, collaboration and teamwork uh, is much more important for the recent organizations. So here comes the very famous two pizza rules by Jeff Bezos from Amazon. If a team can't be fed by two pizzas, then is the, the team is too big. So how, how, how many pizzas you can eat? And can you guess like the uh, like ideal number of team members here? Two pizzas, so maybe like six to eight uh, team members for a specific team. And now we can see another like a new to be trend here like gig economy or on-demand uh, sharing economy. We can see many digital platforms emerging that they can connect uh, those like freelancers and gig workers into like short term uh, the work uh, provided by those firms. So the, here we can see like some changes uh, between uh, original and traditional like economies and the gig economies. Digital platforms can connect the workers and employees for like short term tasks without the traditional organizational like scat forward. So we don't we don't need any uh, human manager or organizational practices for uh, these uh, gig economies. So now we can see the new dynamics between workers, their work, and organizations. And especially the we could see emergence of the white collar gig workers compared to the blue collar gig workers. Blue collar gig workers here, I mean like the uh, Uber drivers and the food delivery guys. But uh, nowadays we can see more gig workers on the more uh, like the yeah, higher skill uh, task. Uh, for example, like consulting and design and mobile application like development. Those tasks also like yeah, operated by the gig platform and the gig economies. So we call them as like contractors, outsource teams and freelancers and like solo planners, solo entrepreneurs. And we uh, have the COVID-19. The COVID-19 is really like a big driving force uh, for the digital transformations. And actually like many, not many, but like some global companies now allow their employees to work from home permanently. That the basically those employees, employees can choose whether they, uh, they work from home or they, uh, they want to, to come to the office for their work. Then 
So my, my question, our question here is then the, what about the workplace? What, what is happening to the workplace? So because of this new, this like demand for a new kind of the work and a new kind of organization that leads to the uh, the new demand for a the new kind of the workplace as well. So we can see like the many many things like change it for this uh, the physical uh, the working place as well. So we could see like open workspace and the work from home and the flexible workplace. Like those are like a dream. Uh, workspace for like the, the fresh the graduate I assume like uh, I can say like the many of the uh, those students that wanted to get a job uh, with these like the working place conditions mm -hmm. and then working space could be a the potential solution for satisfying this new demand to be the new organizational forms and the new nature of the works. So working space indeed uh, have emerged to address those issues and provide benefit uh, in the new working practices. And basically it could offer the very alternative the work uh, setting and the working the context, context the combining the workspace infrastructures and open community features. Okay, they're like a two, the main component here, the, the workspace infrastructure and open community features. So we can say in the most of the co-working space context, we uh, can see the coexistence, the work and communities. Here's another so, question uh, yeah, please. from me. Uh, uh, working place and the co-working yeah. place. For me, like uh, I, I'm more comfortable to come to my office and I'm doing my research in my office is much more productive than any other place like a home or something like that. Even, yeah, I'm, sometimes I can opt, uh, choose the outside of my office for alternatively uh, some reason, but however, the permanently or, or uh, you know, uh, as, a, as an effective way, mm -hmm. I absolutely, uh, prepared to stay in office. But yeah. the business case is uh, changing now, I know that. But however, between uh, like a student and professor, now we are structuring change. We don't need to get together and face-to-face -face seminar is not anymore. We are very accustomed to do this kind of a seminar through the Zoom platform, which is more flexible, more efficient, and more you know, powerful to everyone who are located in their home or distance mm -hmm. place, which is very good. Mm -hmm. So it is now changing uh, uh, abruptly. Yeah. But, you know, like uh, when I'm done, uh, stay at home, stay up office is, is much more, you know, deep and strong core structure is much more comfortable. What do you think? That, I think that's a very good point. And actually at the very beginning of the pandemic, so many, many people like the uh, expected, the co-working industry like should experience like the downturn because of the pandemic. So, like mm -hmm. people, people to realize that the working from home is, 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 is quite nice, right? So they, they can feel like comfortable. And also the working at uh, office, uh, the working place could be like the one good option as well. But I, I should mention that the basically it, it depends on the uh, each the person's situation. So, you know, like the uh, the faculty member in university, like uh, do we have the individual uh, like the private office? Definitely, uh, the, my office is my favorite place actually <laughs> to me mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But like the most of the freelancers and the most of the gig workers, they they don't have like such uh, places. And even though like some of them the work from home. Mm -hmm. uh, the environment could be not that favorable as well. So mm -hmm. sometimes they the work at the uh, coffee shop or mm -hmm. some the uh, some restaurant sometimes or libraries, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's quite not that stable actually. Yeah. So they suppose like they uh, have like some the meeting with their client, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So that's like a really big problem for them. So they, they couldn't meet their client in coffee shop or library. So they need like some sort of the, the more like the, the rigid places for, for this kind of purpose. And actually the working space could provide this benefit uh, for uh, this kind of the uh, working for scenes. So that should be a very starting point of the working space actually, but the benefit provided by the working space is really like expanding in, in different like dimensions and I, I would like to show like how the uh the like sphere of the working space is expanding okay. now i got it okay yeah, professor for uh yeah. sorry for interrupting but i do have a question about the co-working yeah. space as well so yeah. i especially uh we are studying hospitality industry now and then like hospitality industry is based on like providing service to the customers so that we are instead we are working at home we have to go to the actual like places like hotels or restaurants and they provide a service to the customers. So now uh, due to COVID-19, a new technology has been employed in tourism industry as well. So we are using like robots and AIs that can substitute the human resources as well. So that uh, in a perspective of hospitality, industry. I don't really understand about the co-working in a certain uh, situation so that um, I just wonder how we can apply those co-working places in those service sector of the industry. Thank okay you. yeah thank you for yeah thank you for the question. It's, it's really an interesting question I think and like the before before like the answering the question I would like to mention very interesting connection between it was like hospitality industry, and the working space industry, you know, like the many, many of the working space, uh, like a manager, so we call them as like community manager. They are from the hospitality industry. They were like the uh, hotel manager before. But basically their role is to uh, like serve the people, the tenant there. And also in addition to their original job of the hotel manager, then they also like the working as like the uh, the connection builder, so they have like the more job than the uh, the community manager and the hotel manager before, and actually the many many of those like community managers from the hospitality industry and many working space operator they prefer to to recruit this like the uh, those hotel manager the way that these like service uh, experiences. And that there is like that we can see some sort of the uh, overlap the between the uh, hospitality industries and working industries. Okay, there is like some the uh, the given context here, and you know, but for the uh, hospitality, basically it is for entertainment, right? For for like for fun, for like enjoying uh, their times, but for the working space, it is for like the work. It is for like the more, I can say the more like serious the content, and then, uh, then there is like the, the more than the work in the working space. There is like the community component, community aspect, and the because of this like the more like critical the aspect of the working space, the compared to the uh, like hospitalities and uh, those like the travel and tourism the domains i would like to say the importance of the human uh like the power the like human labor is much more important in the context of the working space and also as i already mentioned like the, the for the uh, proper school who who's like the uh education and i think they need like a physical space anyway okay they, they need the physical space for a certain purpose. I don't mean like they sh should like stay all the time in this physical space, but for some reasons, for example, like the meeting the with client, uh, there is like the very good one examples. They need the physical space for those purposes and the working space could provide that benefit for those uh, the people. And those like two aspects, the human uh, resource is much more important in the working context. It's like the working space. And second, they need a like, physical space for their business. So that is like some, uh, the importance of the working space, uh, even though like everything is like digitalized and everything is going online now, 
But anyway, we could see like some benefit from the working space. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Okay, so uh, here comes a brief history of a working space. And as you can assume, like the, the concept of corking is basically from the, uh, the European countries first, in the uh, 1995 in the, uh, Berlin and in New York, that we could see a very initial form of corking space. Those like programmers and engineers, they like yeah, came together and they, they work for their own task. There's no like the pre-existing relationship between them, but they, they came together and they, they worked together for like different tasks. And then we could see like very first uh, quarking network uh, connects communities in like Vienna in early like uh, like 2000. And then in San Francisco, like we could see the very, the more modern the type of the quarking space in San Francisco. And they offered like desk, free Wi-Fi and lunches. And also they have like bike tours together and like the med meditation like sessions as well. And co-working uh, appeared in Google database and Wikipedia in 2007. And 2010, the, we can see the launch of the WeWork, the very first industrialized the co-working network. And now like the WeWork is like sort of the, uh, the very the, the representative the co-working space, the brand in the world now. So uh, this is very like first the WeWork the building, the first that we work, uh, the building uh, in the New York City. Mm -hmm. So we can see like dramatic growth of the co-working space industries in 2018. So we have the around 19,000 co-working spaces with more than the 1.7 million users. And Actually, these are uh, the growth rate is really uh, like crazy, dramatic. <laughs> and <laughs> so, like in actually, even 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 like before me, I I thought at the very at the beginning of the pandemic, like two years ago, like the co-working industries should be uh, struggling for growth. But actually, it it turned out the uh, the growth rate is. Uh, actually accelerated because of this like pandemic and this many many people started the working from home and then as already mentioned they need like some sort of the uh like the, the functions or benefit that working space provide so as many of those the people uh who are working from home they started the visiting the working space in their places as well so that we could see some increase in number of the uh, working space for the last decade. Okay, here's your question. Yeah. If that is true, mm. probably the vice versa, the, the traditional organization, uh, they should be the reduced cost of the maintenance of their you know, owning building. So what do you think about that? Do you have any you know, fact between that the statistics, uh, the the fundamental or or the traditional, you know, maintenance, uh, the the building cost versus and the co-working spaces. You uh, understand? Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a very like interesting situation here. So uh, at the, the beginning of this my presentation, I mentioned like some some of the global companies they they started all of their employees to uh, work from home uh, mm -hmm. in like permanent ways. And that the one one option that those companies provide with their employees that, that they to make a contract with like the, the corking space uh, operators, for example, like a WeWork, because a WeWork they have like many different corking spaces like across the regions and across cities. And the ones the one company uh, to make a contract with WeWork, the companies employees they can visit any the we work uh, like working spaces and then the, the company that will pay for that the basically that those companies could provide uh, those options for their employees and they 
as you mentioned, like they don't need any like the uh, physical office place anymore, right? They can reduce their cost for their oh. purpose. And then they can use those re reduced the cost for mm -hmm. for like the, the new type of the uh, support for their employees. Mm -hmm. That is like the sort of the new uh, like kind of the new practices of the, the working from home mm -hmm. and like the collaboration with the working space mm -hmm. of those like the big companies. So uh, as we have discussed so far, we can see the co-working space becomes very important business practices uh, in, in many different aspects. And COVID-19 pandemic really accelerated uh, this the new trend. But the, given that the extent theories, organization and the works uh, in the decade, there are like many different types of the uh, organizational theories for the new form of organization in the past, but there, there's definitely like a lacking of theoretical foundation of the co-working space. So we would like to fill uh, this void of the literature uh, about the co-working space. So objective of this research is to build a theoretical framework of a co-working space that could explain the key component of the co-working space and their interdependence and mechanism to create relevant values. And for this purpose, we employed the two uh, perspective or approaches. And the first one is a social technical systems perspective. So that this uh, perspective yeah, conceptualize like interaction between two, two different components, like the yeah, social component and technical component. And that this perspective assumes there are like highly interdependent relationship between like different components from uh, either like social or like technical part. And the other, the approach is we employ is a configurational research approach. And as we can assume, like there are many different the uh, component the which are very complex. Uh, and then the we, could see like some the configuration, what kind of the combination of those component would generate the better outcome or better like a value for uh, the users of the working space, the tenant of the working space. And the for, for like this purpose, we combine these two different perspective and approach to, uh, to build a, a the new theoretical framework for the working space. So those are like structure of the study consisting of the five different parts. First, the we the will define the notion of a working space. And then uh, we will explain the why social technical system perspective could be appropriate for uh, analyzing the working space and developing a new theory of the working space. And then uh, we will like the, uh, describe and articulate social technical component of the working space, which are like four plus one, I will uh, introduce later. And then the based on those components, uh, we will discuss how the combination of those components can create a value uh, according to like different mechanisms. And then uh, finally, we will show what kind of potential social, cultural and economic values we could expect from the working space based on those value creation mechanisms. Okay, so let us start from the notion of working space. So it's basically sort of the repetition of what I mentioned at the very beginning. Okay, so we should first understand the context of the why the working space has been emerging. So the first context should be digitalization. So every like digital technologies and capabilities may affect the emergence of the working space. So the digitalization, the basically the reshape the, all the organization forms and all the nature of the, uh, the work and then the working places as well. So we could see many digital platform uh, for uh, helping and like the shaping a different type of a new work and new organization such as 
the Mechanical Turk of Amazon and Upwork, Airbnb and the Uber. Those kind of digital platform changes like the whole industry structures. So yeah, the Airbnb should be good examples for you, right? So introduction of the Airbnb to the uh, hospitality and like tourism industry, like everything changes, right? And gig economies and collaborative consumption are so like the, the one driving uh, force that yeah, the making the working space is more important. Okay, so many the gig workers like started uh, since the financial crisis around like 2008. So many like the fresh uh, the college graduate, those workforces joined the gig economies as like the Uber drivers and the food delivery uh, like guys. And then we can see the explosion, the growth of the gig economies uh, since the last decade. And actually they have like some benefit. So they could provide like some, the new opportunity for those uh, people who lost their jobs. So they could provide like some new opportunity for, for those people and they could mitigate the economic risk. And also they could improve like some psychological benefit uh, due to the, uh, the mitigating economic risk. And then we can see as many freelancers, uh, they started to value autonomy and flexibility in arranging their work schedule and locations. So now many like the young people, they prefer to choose the where to work and the when to work, how much to work. So basically those young generations uh, they prefer those like the autonomies and the flexibility. And but at the same time, those autonomy and flexibility they, uh, have some concerns and some constraint. So many, many, uh, many contexts and many situations, many conditions to make them like distracted uh, from like their the work and their task. Suppose you are working, uh, you're writing like your papers in the coffee shop. Right, so there should be many uh, like factors affecting your like concentration work, which leading to the poor productivity. And suppose you're working from home like all day and all week and all months, so you may feel like isolated, and that may affect uh, your like psychological and social well-being as well. And actually, those problems are really like significant, and the many. Uh, freelancers like suffer from like these kind of concerns and problems. And then working space has like potential to address these type of the concerns and constraint caused by the uh, freelancer jobs and the uh, autonomies and flexibility that those young generation prefer. So we have like three different phases of working space development. And for the uh, first phase, the co-working spaces mainly served the gig economies, which means like those, the one man company, like solo entrepreneurs and the freelancers and the micro organizations, uh, which include like startups with like two or three uh, the members. So for the first phase of the co-working space, the role of the community manager is really important. So the, we could see the real like community uh, the component uh, in the first phase. And then for the second phase, the many like the large corporation, they started replicating the practice of working space. Like they uh, like set up the open space uh, in their like working places and they try to give the flexibility and autonomy to uh, their employees as well. And for the, uh, the phase three for now, like many working spaces uh, like provide uh, like the service for the large corporation. For example, like suppose the one working space operators, they have like five story buildings for their working space business. Like the one whole like floor, one whole like story can be the least for the one large corporation. And then basically this is like the win-win uh, relationship between working space operators and those large corporation. A large corporation can reduce 
uh, their cost uh, for like, managing and operating their like space and co-working space, they could develop a new uh, revenue stream that we, that this large corporation as new group of the customers. So now that we can see the phase three of co-working space is expanding uh, in different countries and different regions. But there was a difference between co-working space, uh, the verges like conventional business center or like service office. Actually, do we had uh, business centers and service offices providing like service for those like small size, small medium sized companies or like the freelancers. Definitely there are very clear like common aspect the, between co-working space and those are conventional business centers. They both provide convenient workspace and relevant office services and resources. But also there are very stark differences between them. Okay, and for the working space, they leverage the open spaces and share the resources. The conventional business centers and service offices, they, they the most cases, they don't have the open uh, workplace. Okay, they only have like private workspace for their uh, like client, but the working space, they have the uh, large open space and some shared resources like cafeteria and food, free food. And those like shared resources uh, could provide more flexibility and autonomy for the working space tenant. And also, I think this is like a more important component. The working space, they could provide access to professional and social communities. The community component of the working space is like the most important the differences with the uh, conventional business centers or like service offices. Okay. So the question, uh, like a co-working spaces is very similar with like a Airbnb style or like a Uber style, like a, what um, uh, the sharing bike style. So sharing resources with other uh, people's yeah. And so working places, I can be able to use the utilities and service and whatever. Oh, yeah. uh, but but is, is, is it, how about the concept of uh, co-working places and physical spaces and virtual spaces? Is, mm -hmm. is it conceptually different? Right, right. Okay. But anyway, oh. people, uh, you know, in order to reduce their cost of maintenance of buildings and uh, to choose to co-working place rather than owning buildings, uh, mm -hmm. is it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, people are prepared to, again, go into the virtual space rather than physical space. So mm -hmm. it would be better for working in <laughs> virtual spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Let, let's say there are two different types of the uh, sharing economy. Like the first type uh, would be like Airbnb or like Uber type of sharing economy, which means uh, those like uh, gig workers, they, they uh, possess their own the, uh, properties. The Airbnb owner, like they have their own like house, the rooms, and then they try to share uh, the with like the individual like the, the members users like share their properties and their like the uh, resources with other the peer the users and they should be like the first type and the uh, the other type should be like the shared bike the shared bike type which means like company owned the uh, property they mm -hmm. owned the uh, the resource and then like the the many people many users like shared those mm -hmm. owned properties by a company. Mm -hmm. So I can say the working space is more similar to the second type mm -hmm. because like working space operators, they owned their mm -hmm. own properties, their own the working like the place and so on. So they share like their uh, own the resources. But mm -hmm. I also think the working space has like some aspect of the first type of the sharing economy as well. Because actually uh, I mentioned many times about the community aspect of the co-working space, which means those like individual tenants, they also are willing to share their resources 
tangible or intangible resources with the other, like with the members of the working space. Mm -hmm. So it could be the knowledge or it could be like skills or just it could be like some favors. But mm -hmm. anyway, like they are willing to share their resources and capabilities with other members, mm -hmm. given that the community aspect, the component. But at the very the starting point, so the working space is basically from the second the type of the, uh, the sharing economies, but so we can see some substantial the aspect of the first type of the uh, sharing economy as well. So uh, here the, we define the co-working space uh, in this way. A co-working space is a social technical system that fosters tangible, intangible resource, the sharing and social interaction in a way to facilitate autonomy, identification, efficiency, and flexibility for tenants in creating social, cultural, and economic values. So we will cover like each component in the following the uh, presentation. So then why like social technical systems could be like potentially appropriate for uh, explaining the working space. Okay, so working space uh, is not the merely physical space. It's different from the uh, like service centers or like the business centers uh, in the past. Okay, so it is more likely a holistic system where like the social and technical component are interdependent to each other. And then more importantly, like configured together to form a working and socializing environment, okay? They're like the both component, like the working component and socializing or like the community component uh, in the uh, working space. So which uh, means it is like more likely to a social technical systems. Then what is social technical system, uh, by the way? So it is like rooted in the 1950s, like Tavistock research, which means like the, uh, the researchers like uh, participating in the research as like observer. So they observed like all the interaction between those like subjects, but they never like intervened uh, those interactions like between the subject. And then they can observe the real interactions and between uh, the different subjects. And through like these approaches, they could identify some uh, complex relationship or a complex uh, interdependency of different components of the uh, subject. So the, basically this theoretical framework could be very uh, like useful for your research. And basically this is like very high level like the uh, theory so that you can employ uh, this uh, theoretical perspective for uh, your master or like that is or doctoral dissertation and it's like overarching uh, theories but when you uh, try to examine some the um, interesting phenomenon in a society so in a the business or in our industry so like some example snapshot of the how the we could uh, like explain social technical systems in a way and as you can see here, there are like two of the basic component of the social technical systems. The one is like social system here, and the other is technical systems. And those two interdependent systems surrounded by complex environment. So here we mentioned digitalization and the gig economy and it's like complex environment surrounding the, uh, the co-working space and social technical systems. And each component uh, has like some different the, uh, categories or different the types of the, uh, the each component. Here are like structures for describing organizations and the people for uh, articulating some cognitive and social aspect of those system. And physical system is like the more straightforward. It is about hardware and software like some like tangible like facilities. And finally task is about the, the work work uh, itself. So we will employ like this framework for articulating the component, social technical component of the co-working space. 
So the coworking space uh, is like social technical systems consisting of the interrelated in titles, right? So they are like different components of the coworking space and they are interdependent to each other. And at the same time, the with the combination of those uh, components, so they could uh, generate uh, some expected outcomes, so expected values in our like cases. So again, I would like to emphasize, so STS theory could provide a very sound theoretical base uh, for identifying the key technical and social element of a working space. And also we could explain that there are like complex interaction and combination of those components to result in outcomes. And also that we can think about how to like configure like the best outcomes by simultaneously designing both system element and their interdependencies. So, so we employ like this uh, very process based approaches. First, we will uh, identify the social technical component and the value creation mechanisms, and finally, social, cultural, and economic values. For each link, uh, we need like some configurational approaches, how different type of the combination of component and how different type of the combination of mechanisms could generate the better outcomes or the better the mechanisms. And those are important the aspect of the, uh, our research. And then now that we are like, jumping to the, the main the content of the our research and social component of the working space so here are very uh, yeah. my question uh another question about that uh, you are talking about the social technical and uh, configuration and uh, sort of things but actually the the people uh uh the the hang around the starbucks uh, for meeting and they have a small size of numbers and seminars and meetings and they kind of stop the reason why they attending the, the Starbucks, probably they like to share their culture and talk yeah. and uh, have some coffee and uh, music sort of things. So your, your research is uh, focusing on the, some infrastructure and component and the configuration of those stuff rather than cultural in, inside of the culture of that place, so, something like that. Right. So what I think my question is like uh, uh, the back place, yeah. Okay. Physical system, task, people, structure, which is sounds very good and is absolutely legitimate and um, we need that kind of infrastructure. But, you know, as you know, I like to, I like to see some other people uh, around me and uh, sound music and then uh, drink yeah. coffee and just chat around and uh, look around and uh, other people's working. Uh, there's a cultural background and, and the atmosphere background, some, something like that. Do you consider I, the kind of aspect on this model? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So the social technical system is by definition is very holistic, like the uh, view or perspective. So it, it doesn't, it doesn't like the uh, cover, like the one like particular or like specific part of these components. So we uh, should consider like those, like the complex relationship between the component and also like the, the importance of it, each component should be the very starting point. Mm -hmm. But uh, in later stages, and the more importantly, the interdependency of those components and the relationship and combination of those uh, like component is really key of the uh, understanding like social technical systems. And definitely we try to uh, address like these interdependencies and, and those like social cultural aspect of the working space as like social technical systems as well. Yeah, they did, I think I think they do, there is really like important the uh, the uh, aspect of to understand social technical systems and also like working space as social technical systems as well. You. So like the uh, the we we have like we had like many discussions like how how do we can like choose 
uh, those like social technical system component for the uh, like describing or like articulating working space. And then like throughout the yeah, many rounds of discussions and like the research, we uh, could identify those four, the key component of the, uh, the working space is social technical systems. And uh, those are like the four components, collaboration consumptions and sense of communities, Definitely sense of community is like sort of the cultural and like social cultural like aspect uh, of the working space and digital infrastructure and applications and open worker space. And those are like the four components. And the, we have like uh, catches like the, uh, some the characteristic of those uh, components. So for example, collaborative consumption is to relate to the like task, the work, the component of the systems. And also like structure, organizational like system uh, component as well. And then the we uh, have added like the one important the uh, component uh, in this uh, like combination of the component, which is the community manager. The community manager really plays the critical and essential role uh, in working space. And uh, we uh, like propose that community manager they perform as a necessary facilitator to like the promote the combination of the, those like the four uh, different the component of the co-working space. So let me uh, introduce uh, those components like the one by one. So collaborative consumption. So I, I I can say that you are quite familiar with uh, this concept and these practices because you are the young generation, and uh, you are quite familiar with these like sharing economies, uh, yeah, the features. Right? So the basically the collaborative consumption is uh, sort of the old concept, but the thanks to the uh, introduction of the digital platform and the other like digital technologies, we can see the real. Uh, dramatic the increase of the uh, the using collaborative consumption in different the domains, and the basically there are three different types. The first type product service is the, which is like similar to the second type of sharing economy I just mentioned, the uh, the sharing bike, and the second type the redistribution the market uh, is like Airbnb type. And the collaborative lifestyle is like the more like higher level like theme of the collaborative consumption. So I would like to say the working space is the most relevant to the uh, the product service at the very beginning. But now that we can see the uh, collaborative the lifestyle in the working space. So uh, the collaborative consumption aspect in working space, the basically the uh, many the resources could be circulated. Uh, in co-working space context. And the both tenant and the uh, co-working space operators, they can share their resources, tangible or like intangible things. And then this is very like the core the part of the co-working space. And the sense of community is like quite the social and cultural the component of the, uh, the co-working space. And this is like feeling that the members of any specific group have of the being connected to other members and the being connected to the, uh, the communities. And at this, the concept is quite the uh, old and classic the concept in the community, the research. Also, uh, it could see seen in the, uh, the research on the sense of the virtual community. So we can see many type of virtual communities in digitalized world. And it was like sense of the virtual community is really the important concept and construct for research. And I think the sense of community is also the very the important component for like understanding the working space. Okay, so in working space, sense of communities could be uh, described in this way. A tenant perception of similarity to others and the feeling of belonging to co-working communities as a dependent, dependable and reliable structure. Which means like if a tenant to feel the sense of community to the uh, co-working space or to the other tenant, that increase uh, the certain the benefit for the uh, those tenant compared to the uh, those tenant like without the sense of communities. So because 
in co-working space context, uh, this like sense of communities and feeling uh, like the belongingness to uh, those co-working space communities really the important uh, experiences for uh, those tenants. And digital infrastructure and application. So again, it's quite like straightforward. It is like, yeah, those the physical system of the uh, social technical system, the perspective. So digital technologies that we can see like everywhere. So that we are now like having the Zoom, the meeting. So this is a, a good example of digital technologies. And so digital technology can change like every business processes and ways to produce and deliver product and service and the structure of the organizations and nature of the working process and space and design and so on. So here uh, in working space context, we could divide uh, these uh, like component into digital infrastructures, like the more like the backbone uh, style type of the digital technologies, okay? Software, hardware, and networks is, uh, you know, so when the people decide the which the coaching space they will join at the very beginning, the most important factor is the Wi-Fi speed. The Wi-Fi quality is the most important the fact, one of the most important factors affecting the addition the making of the potential tenant. So we can say those digital infrastructure is really important, the component for the coaching space. And then digital application is on the top of the digital infrastructures, and which means a specific system or application or service for managing working space and supporting tenant in different ways. So for example, the we could see like building information management, security systems and business functional systems and open workspace and building management. Because like in most working space, they have like shared the meeting room it is very important to have the uh, like the very reliable system for making a reservation for the meeting room and the other like open the workspace and so on. And finally, the open workspace is another important the component for the, the physical uh, system of the social technical systems. And you know, like we can see many open the workspace uh, like practices in different the part of the organizations for business enterprise and university and library. And we can see many different types of open, open worker space that promoting the creativity and flexibility uh, of those people. And definitely the working space, the one, the key the, uh, resource that can be shared with many different tenants is the open worker space. So uh, have, you, have you ever like visited uh, to any working space in Korea. So I yeah, really I, love, yeah. yeah. How, how do you feel about, yeah, like the it's atmosphere? Just a, you know, short, short meeting and, um, you know, short term and temporal meeting with uh, the guys, uh, the company or whatever. It's, it's, it's just a temporal physical spaces uh, for joining together. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then that's it. So it's working space for me. Is it like a conference room? Okay. Not the not the permanent working room, but in 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 our field, tourism field, we are now uh, another another you know stage come to us. It, like uh, um, have you heard about that keyword? Um, the work. Okay, work work. Yeah, well, work, work certification, work yeah, certification. Work, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's another, another new stream of work certification, uh, work right. and escapi, escapism. Yeah. But, you know, like uh, that keyword also familiar with us is while we are uh, leisuring or while we are traveling, while we are, you know, is, uh, visiting other, you know, place for, for fun or for enjoying for, you know, uh, some, and then they work over there from a distance. But actually the due to the technology and infrastructure uh, is workable and they can be able to work together in real time base. 
But however, culturally and psychologically or, or, or philosophically, it's very hard, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't want to work when I was <laughs> in, out of town or in yeah, Jeju-do yeah. and they keep <laughs> focusing on research or talking on or teaching whatever with the students, other uh, students or uh, professors. Yeah. It's them. them. <laughs> So we, we need to discuss about that philosophically, why people should, you know, uh, work while they, yeah. you know, free time. It's physically, the, you're, you're talking about the physical, you know, availability. But yeah. however, the, if the workplace, you know, I'm owner, of a company, okay, a employee. Here's a lot of a workplace here and there. So while you're, you know, uh, holidays, you work, keep working on it because of availability. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think uh, the, the first of all, like I believe the, the physical environment is a really important factor that affecting the productivity, right? So. That, that should be like the, the one thing that we can the, uh, agree to with. And then the, the concept like the, uh, the, the work certification, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, the concept of that, like the, uh, the working during like the vacation or like during holiday uh, could be relevant to the like this factor, like the physical environment is really the, uh, important because like, uh, from my own experiences, like the, whenever I, I have like the conference uh, in, in different cities, when I when I shoot uh, the work at the hotel room, which is very like the uh, the bad experiences. But sometimes I realize that is my productivity level is quite increasing mm -hmm. during like the work at <laughs> uh, a hotel room, right? So I think those like environmental like factors really influence my productivity. So it's the same to the, the co-working space. So those like the open, open the worker space is um, for, for like some reasons, they could uh, influence like productivity in some negative ways. So we can see like some the, uh, the, the study the findings and those like totally open the worker space, the, like ultimately they the should the reduce the productivity because like there are so many noises outside there and like the, your colleagues and like just uh, the passing over and talking like some like, like, like some more talks to you, then you cannot concentrate on the, your like task. And there is like some yeah, side, side effect of the open worker space. But for the many in the working space, they provide the both the uh, open worker space as well as like private the working space. So you can choose if you prefer to work in the uh, like the open the work space. It's like the hot desk, like the long desk without like any preoccupied like seat. Then you can you can work there. But if you would want like some private the uh, some the space, private time, then then you can choose to work from like some the private the area of the working space. Then those flexibility also could provide a uh, very good benefit. Or advantage for uh, those like freelancers. So okay, I that's, think that's a good point. Yeah. Like uh, when you're saying now, there's difference between individual levels. Some yeah. of people like to open space. Some of people like a private space. Mm -hmm. But uh, like uh, so, uh, why don't you consider that kind of a moderating variable for your research models? Mm -hmm. That is, uh, uh, there is uh, some difference between individual and also psychological fact you know people mm -hmm. more favorable like like what you said the hotel you know hotel is means it's not the physical you know building but the psychological building like yeah. a, i enjoy the hotel means means you know it's, it's not just a sleeping you know building it's for like yeah. a environmentally psychologically philosophically i enjoy that that what items yeah, so that's why you like to work in hotel. Yeah. 
Okay. That's, yeah, yeah. That's I, I think, yeah, that's a really like good point. And yeah, we, I think so we can develop uh, the more about this relationship between those the physical environment and uh, the effect of those components into like social cultural like responses of the uh, those working space tenant yeah I, I i really like it that is a really good point you know i i can yeah. i can point out this point because i i major words uh, mis i know the <laughs> mis guys the, the the way of thinking and the way of structure <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah you are exactly structurally about <laughs> The, the concept of MIS professors. But I mean now <laughs> 10, about 10 years in hospitality and tourism. Yeah, yeah. The tourism professor and tourism is uh, uh, very, very different from your you know, perspective. Yeah, right, so right, right, right. You combine those two, physical level and the psychology, psychological level together, mm. and that would be more suitable for uh, for your research model and for fasc fascinating model, uh, yeah, beyond, right, right. beyond the MIS. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's true. So yeah, actually, that, that's why I I chose like this topic for uh, this seminar series because I I have like several several like not several like a few the research project on the uh, tourism and hospitalities, but I I chose like working space topics because like I, I mentioned at the very beginning, there are like some relevance between working space and those like hospitality domains. And I also get like some the uh, some new perspectives from from the students and from the faculty members in those uh, domains. Yeah, I, I, I was correct. <laughs> it's really like refreshing and helpful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your perspective. Okay, yeah, keep moving. Uh, it's uh, like 10 to 15. Okay, so we are on the right track, I think. <laughs> so, uh, the given those like the four different components of the working space, as I mentioned at the very beginning, the community manager, they play the really critical role. So, I'm not sure like how, how many of you uh, like plan to join the industry as like hotel manager uh, in the future. I, I think it's like this job could be uh, your alternative <laughs> in the future. If you like the, uh, the building of the new relationship or like the, uh, have the motivation to uh, like connecting the people in different domains then this could be sort of the best job uh for you and also i can say it's quite like promising job in the future as well so this job uh, cannot be replaced by artificial intelligence at all so this is really like a human job and so yeah this is my highly <laughs> recommendation is to consider like this uh, job uh, opportunity in the future mm -hmm. so so the, the the by by name itself like community manager uh is like relevant to the online and offline communities to manager. So their job is very straightforward. The personal interaction with the members of the online offline communities and networkings, and also like they support the community members in different aspects. But before the co-working community management is much, much more than that. So it is about the organizing events, like social networking events, and building connections to between the different co-working space tenants. And also like the, you are expected to provide some psychological uh, like support uh, for like tenant as well. Because like the, the most member of the co-working space, they are like the freelancers and like solo entrepreneurs and they are sort of lonely uh, like the working forces and uh, you are expected to give like some psychological support for those uh, people as well. And uh, that said, so you are expected to have like some many different qualities. You can, I think you can like nurture uh, these kind of qualities, such as like social skills. Communication skill is really like important for these jobs. And also you are expected to have to develop some emotional intelligence. You need empathy, right? So you need empathy and sympathy for like those uh, like freelancers and the solo entrepreneurs and so on. So, so the role of the community manager in working space is to catalyze combination of the social technical component. Okay, so it is totally different from the managers and leaders in a traditional organizations 
So they are like the uh, located in the top of the uh, like hierarchy, right? They like order and they check the process and basically they own the uh, resources of the uh, organizations, right? But the community manager, they do not own the community or they do not own resources, but they just for perform as like the facilitators. They initiating the collaborative consumption and they also produce like certain norms among those like different members of the coworking space. And the, uh, the tenant, the sense of belonging that should be highly affected by the effort of the community managers, okay? So community managers should play a very critical role in promoting the sense of belonging of the tenant. And also during their like task, the yeah, community manager uh, like fully utilize the uh, digital infrastructure and application and open workspace, open working space. So uh, in the many uh, working space, they have the uh, social networking event like almost every week, every day. They have like some the uh, seminars and like some the, the workshop. And, and this uh, role is very important for the community managers. And the, during this task, a community manager can be fully uh, leverage uh, those like the component of the working space. So like, again, the, we identified the four uh, the component of the working space and then uh, added community manager as like necessary the facilitator of the combination of those four components. And now we are uh, the moving to the value creation mechanism of working space. How those different the combination of those components could uh, like generate uh, different kind of the values. What kind of the value creation mechanism we could expect from the co-working space. Here are like the two different mechanisms we uh, identified. The first uh, mechanism is uh, like autonomy versus identification. So I will introduce like more about this uh, mechanism, but uh, intuitively that we can we can think that autonomy and identification is like has like some trade-off relationship between them. For example, if you have like higher level of autonomies. And that means that you may have like lower level of identification with like certain group or with a certain uh, like organizations, okay? The ones that you have the higher level of identification, it is like the most likely that you have the lower level of autonomy. You cannot choose like what to do and like when to do and where to do and so on. And the second type of the uh, like value creation mechanism of working space is flexibility versus efficiency. So like the autonomy and identification mechanisms, also we can see some trade-off relationship though, with uh, like flexibility and efficiency, right? So if you have the uh, higher level of efficiency, in most cases, the level of flexibility should be very low, okay? On the other hand, if you want to pursue a like, higher level of flexibility, the level of efficiency should be very low. But the working space uh, has potential to address uh, this like trade-off or like conflict uh, relationship between those like two different components in a very good way. So let me explain how uh, these uh, core mechanisms potentially could provide the value for a uh, working tenant. Okay. So we, we, we love like autonomy. Now I am under like lockdown in Shanghai. So, so my autonomy level is very low. So I'm very uh, unhappy, right? So if I could get this, my autonomy level back, I would be very happy and I would be very glad. So uh, high level of autonomy enabled by like collaborative consumptions and open workspace, digital infrastructure and application, those components can promote high level of the autonomy, right? So for the open worker space, collaborative consumption, digital infrastructure and application, so basically you can choose the where to work, the when to work and how much uh, you want to work. And you can have like higher level of autonomy. But the one, the one thing uh, that we should consider here is again, the with higher level of autonomy, it is like more likely to have a lower level of identification. 
identification is basically relevant to the like the sense of belonging. So whether uh, that you feel belong to like certain organization or a certain group of people or a certain uh, like the community, right? So when you have like high level of autonomy, if you like the, the wanted to whatever you want, you don't you don't you don't need to like belong to like any kind of the, the member uh, like communities or organizations, right? So that you can enjoy like the full uh, like a range of autonomies. So that said, the higher level of autonomy creates like some challenges for individuals and their organizations. Right? The first, those with more freedom autonomy that should deal with like creating and managing routines. So it is really like critical the part for like, many of the freelancers who are working from home. So they should build up their own like the routine for working, but it is really like challenging for them. Also like, the uh, autonomy it may generate identity related challenges, right? So if you ever like enjoy like higher level of autonomy, sometimes you may think uh, who, am, who I am, where I am from, <laughs> what I'm doing here. Those like identity related like crises could happen with like higher level of autonomy. But the working space uh, has like some potential to address this uh, potential like conflict and also like could strengthen the identification without like threatening the desired autonomies and how. So do you remember like I emphasized many times the important uh, like community aspect, community component of a working space, right? The open workspace uh, should enhance interaction and networking uh, with other members in working space. And basically it could strengthen the sense of the communities of the uh, working space members. And the sense of communities, the basically is about uh, identification, is about like sense of belonging. The with the component of the uh, community aspect of working space, the tenant can feel higher level of sense of communities uh, leading to the uh, higher level of identification. So here that we can see uh, autonomy and identification conflict could be uh, the resolved or at least addressed uh, the, with a working space component with a different the combination of those components. And for the second the mechanism, flexibility and efficiency mechanisms, actually the, this trade-off relationship between flexibility and efficiency is really the important topic, especially the, for the uh, like organizational the research. So in the past, Increasing efficiency is like the most important, uh, like the capability for, for any type of the companies and especially for the manufacturing and those traditional companies and industries. But nowadays, everything is uncertain and those market situation is like turbulent. So we cannot like be forecast and we cannot expect what will happen tomorrow, right? So under this uncertainty and those like turbulence, uh, those companies and those uh, enterprises are expected to increase the level of flexibility. But as I already mentioned, the increasing flexibility uh, may result in the decreasing the efficiency for those uh, companies. So it is very important to uh, have the, a capability to uh, improve and increase the flexibility and efficiency at the same time. That is like the concept of the ambidexterity. And the, those ambidexterities could be obtained by the collaborative consumption component and digital infrastructure application component of working space. So ambidexterity is very uh, the important concept for uh, organizational like research and those like MIS research and so on. So I hope you could have a better understanding of this concept uh, from uh, today's seminar. So here uh, is like some the yeah, acute uh, visual uh, representation of the, the concept of ambidexterity. So the, basically the ambidexterity, the report to the uh, having two conflicting the capability at the same time. But here like flexibility and efficiencies are those like conflicting components. And if you have the, the capability of the ambidexterity, that means that you can have the uh, most higher level of flexibility and efficiency. 
So uh, in sum, we have like two clear like value creation mechanism of the co-working space here. So first one is autonomy and identification trade-off relationship. And the second is flexibility and efficiency like trade-off relationship. And the one more, the prospect that we can add here, actually this identification and efficiency is quite traditional the values and nature of work or organizations in the past. So in the past, the increasing efficiency is like it's a, the more important than like the improving flexibility and identification, like having the very strong sense of belonging to your like organization is really important. So we can say those like two, uh, like the mechanisms are like very traditional values and nature of work. On the other hand, autonomy and flexibility is like quite the new, the values and the new like nature of work and organizations in the recent days. So the value creation mechanism of working space like could happen that with the interdependency of those like four, the different the, uh, the mechanism component and with this combination and interaction and interdependencies, we could see the real, like the outcome or value could be generated uh, through uh, these uh, value creation mechanisms. Okay. And finally, so, yeah, yeah. So, so far you are talking about the co-working place uh, between the own place and the shared place. And that is physical to physical, but the structure is just different. Uh, stay in one place or sharing the place with other people. Uh, but as you know very well, we are now in, in, in the virtual world era and um, people are highly interested in moving into metaverse world and virtual world, something like that. Probably, uh, your team also need to consider that kind of a virtual labor, you know, uh, stage above uh, 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 from from traditional, you know, physical labor. So the physically is two by two, and virtually and physically. So that would be more, you know, overall or a holistic perspective on like a working place and co-working place and then virtual working place. What do you think? Actually, we have the very exact concern on the uh, those like the, the virtual or like the uh, the virtual like the component of the working space. But I, I, I also think this could be quite relevant to the concern of the uh, tourism and hospitality domains as well, right? So mm -hmm. basically these experiences like quite physical, like visiting mm -hmm. the destination mm -hmm. and like visiting like a hotel or like the, those like the resort. And these quite like physical experiences mm -hmm. uh, by definition and by nature. Mm -hmm. But uh, the weird uh, introduction of the metaverse, like a new virtual mm -hmm. uh, like technologies, we should think about it, but um, so we don't we don't we don't know we don't we don't know like so far like, uh, we couldn't see like some clear like trend how those like working space domains and working mm -hmm. space industry really try to employ mm -hmm. these like the metaverse for example like these mm -hmm. kind of virtual mm -hmm. uh, like place concept into like working space industries because really like the physical space driven business and physical space uh, driven like industry here they have very a uh, small portion of the uh, digital component. They have digital like mobile application, for example, and mobile application could promote some yeah, community component of the working space because they, they can interact with other like people in through like mobile application in addition to the physical space. But I I I I haven't heard of the uh, like metaverse working space or <laughs> but I, 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 I believe there should be some opportunities, right? So they're like some, the metaverse, like online meetings, mm -hmm. the metaverse, the conference, mm -hmm. then there should be like some metaverse working space. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, 
what about I, I couldn't see the real like application or practices so far and that, that's like the our the uh the one of your the, homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely yeah, that should be um like sort of the, the forecasting and prospect uh like a research if we uh, want to like the emphasize this the virtual component of the working space for our research we may want to like add some future research direction <laughs> maybe yeah that's, rather that's than, right yeah. because yeah. you know so, so people now are talking about the physical space and virtual space and whether yeah. we choose or not and how we can form the virtual space beyond the physical space and there is some component and then the, the items and we uh, we should concerned and consider but however from your perspective your co-working places is a physical co-working places yeah. why not we have virtual working places mm -mm. co-working places there must be something considerable you know variables yeah. for physical co-working places goes to the yeah. virtual co-working places Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Like I, I remember like the one research that uh, examined the uh, the uh, the uh, effect of the metaverse on the uh, the virtual team, the members, mm -hmm. yeah, like sense of the belonging, right? So basically, those virtual teams they they like the uh, multiply located in different places, so their like the sense of the uh, the belonging to each other that should be very low compared to the uh, like physically co-located uh, team. But through like the metaverse, like they could increase those like sense of connection and the sense of belonging uh, with each other. So, so that that could be quite relevant to the uh the, the, this context as well. Okay, yeah. Thank you for thank you for pointing out that that very important the uh, the component for the future research. Invite thank me you. to close. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is like the final uh, part of today's presentation. Then the, we like discuss like the two the value creation mechanisms, like the those autonomy and identification and flexibility and the yeah, efficiency. Then how those uh, value creation mechanisms could generate the potential social, cultural and economic values. And uh, before jumping to the main content, I would like to introduce like some the important key words and key concept here. And we uh, define like two dimensions of values. The first is uh, social cultural values and the other is economic values. Social cultural value uh, is the benefit uh, relevant to the interaction of the core working component and which emphasizing in social and cultural aspect of a tenant. On the other hand, economic value is like economic return. So what kind of the, uh, the real monetary value that those tenants can realize uh, through uh, using the co-working uh, space, okay? And uh, we identify the main mechanism and peripheral mechanisms for creating its value type. And we uh, propose that autonomy identification mechanism should be the main mechanism for creating social cultural value. And flexibility and efficiency mechanism could be the main one for creating economic values. So we will uh, like discuss this aspect the more uh, in following slide. And there are like one more twist. Uh, I mentioned that there are different types of tenant in co-working space. So basically that we can divide them into three different types. The first type is the individual uh, tenant uh, who are like freelancers and fellow entrepreneurs and those like contractors. And the second type is a small medium uh, the business including startups and like some of the uh, small size like design agencies and so on. And finally, uh, those established corporate, they, they are like large corporate, they, they have no problem at all like to prepare their own like, working space. But for some reasons, they like join the working space, um, especially not all the uh, part, but the some part or like the one division or like a one project team, 
uh, tended to join the forking space for their purpose. And then uh, by different the tenant types, but their like major the motivation to join working space should be different. And according to these different motivation, their like the value created by working space should be uh, different. For example, the we uh, suggest that the individual for individual tenants, they may have the higher level of social cultural motivation because during their the work, uh, working from home or working uh, at the coffee shop, they may feel like lonely and they uh, feel like stress uh, about their like loneliness. Then, then those working space could address like these uh, like the problems and they could improve the like social cultural like the benefit. But economic motivation like a medium level because actually uh, it costs uh, mm -hmm. a lot compared to the uh, working from home and working from the coffee shop. So the economic the benefit could be like the 50-50 uh, from our perspective. On the other hand, small or medium business, they may have like higher level of economic motivation, also like the medium level of social cultural motivation for their individual uh, employees. Okay, so they're like two, two different options for small or medium uh, businesses, like they can join working space and also they can prepare their own the working space. And when we compare two different options, the environment uh, like factors should be much better uh, the, with the working space options, right? So then they, they can provide the better like social cultural value for their employees. And for uh, established corporate, their like social cultural motivation should be very low compared to the uh, individual uh, like tenant or a small to medium business tenant, but they may have like higher level of economic motivation because uh, they could uh, have like separate project team or like separate division uh, into the coworking space and they can like have like dual structure of the uh, companies and they could generate a better like outcomes by uh, employing and uh, like developing those like uh, structural ambidextrities. So we will like cover like this part, uh, the one of the uh, later slide. So the way that this, like the basic, the, uh, the discussion here, that there are two dimensions of the values, social, cultural, and economic values, and the autonomy and identification mechanism will influence uh, like social cultural values as like the main mechanisms and flexibility and efficiency that will influence economic values as main mechanisms. And also there are like some differences by uh, different tenant types. So like taken all together into like the one model should be very challenging, but we try hard here. So these are like the, uh, the uh, figures that we uh, made for explaining these uh, different, uh, like the, uh, the mix or twist between the two different uh, value types and two different mechanisms and a different uh, type of tenant here. So here, uh, let me briefly explain this uh, figure. Social cultural values, the mainly uh, influenced by the autonomy and identification, the mechanisms. And these social cultural value is mainly for the individual tenant and some part of small medium business. And for the economic values, their like a main mechanism that should be the flexibility and efficiency. And that these values as mainly for the established corporate tenant. So this is like the very like basic the outline how uh, each mechanisms uh, influence like each the value and for each type of tenant. So we will like cover like one by one now. First, we will cover like how autonomy and identification, the mechanism could generate social cultural values. So here are like some examples of the potential social cultural values like psychological well-being, social well-being, and feeling the personal competence, friendship and relationship, learning, knowledge exchange could be like some benefit uh, in terms of social cultural aspect. Uh, from the individual to the small medium businesses. And for uh, like a large corporation, 
employee satisfaction and entrepreneurial innovative climate could be a potential uh, social cultural values. For individual tenant and the yeah, part of small medium businesses, the psychological well-being and social well-being that should be the most dominant value they could enjoy from uh, working space. Right. So, the basically the working space component really solve the problem of the individual tenant suffered uh, from working from home and working uh, at like different uh, like the open spaces. And for uh, small medium business and the large corporation, the more effective and inclusive environment and entrepreneurial and innovative climate could be like social cultural the values they could enjoy uh, from staying in the working space. And then the, we are, are now discussing about the flexibility and efficiency mechanism for generating economic values, so mainly for the large corporations. So those are like some examples. So let's starting from the, uh, uh, on the bottom, strategic flexibility, collective task performance and business growth, talent recruiting opportunity and low turnover rate is like some of the benefit or values the established corporation can enjoy the, from the co-working space and structure the work arrangement and improve productivity and individual task performance could be like some economic values those individual and part of the small to medium business can enjoy the, from the co-working space so as i already mentioned this flexibility and efficiency is a mechanism is mainly working for creating economic values. And for small to medium to businesses, like contextual ambidextrity could be obtained by the co-working space. Okay, so there's like one kind of the ambidextrity here. The contextual ambidextrity by definition refers to a ability to force a context supporting to split and allocate time and effort or resources between two conflicting demands like the alignment and adaptation those two uh, tasks like fight the conflict demands especially for like small and medium sized business but the working space could uh, help uh, like to split and allocate these resources uh, between the two different demands and that is because of the, the modularity of the space uh, contributing the flexibility of the small medium business. And also it was like small medium sized business, they like the using working space, the more than the space itself. So they could spend less time concerning about like utilities and the other like those the managerial like tasks and operational tasks other than this main business. So they can reduce uh, this uh, resource uh, and this effort uh, on those like unnecessary and less important tasks. And then they can the more focus on the their main business. And that is like the benefit that those like small medium business uh, can enjoy from working space. And for the large corporation, they could uh, like the uh, develop structural ambidexterity. And this kind of ambidexterity is like, uh, like enabled by like dual structures. So when we have the, the one large corporation, some part of the organization, they may have the more emphasis on the increasing efficiency level. Okay, so maybe those like the manufacturing and accounting, this kind of the uh, like domains uh, need more efficiency, right? But on the other hand, some different part like the research and development, R&D and the marketing, those type of the functions and those type of the part, they need the more like the flexibility and efficiency, okay? But the, when those are different part of the, uh, like those functions and the uh, teams into one organization, into one like work, work space, there should be like some conflict, right? So in this case, working space uh, could be a alternative like either those like higher level of efficiency group or a higher level of the uh, flexibility group can join the co-working space so that they can have like some dual like structure so that they can obtain 
the both a uh, high level of the flexibility and high level of efficiency. And finally, for individual tenant, they could improve task performance. And also the networking and collaboration uh, should be the very uh, desirable like the benefit those individual tenants can enjoy from the co-working space. So yeah, so a discussion for uh, today's presentation. So for uh, this study that we have the built in overarching contingency fit theoretical framework of a co-working space, there are like a three, three like a main uh, part. The first one is the four component plus the one necessary facilitator of the co-working space and social technical systems. And they are collaborative consumptions and digital infrastructure and applications, sense of communities and open workspace and community manager as a necessary facilitators. We also identified the two core value creation mechanisms, autonomy and identification and flexibility and efficiency mechanisms. And based on those component and mechanisms, we also clarified the uh, potential social, cultural, and economic values by different types of tenant. And uh, actually it is a very initial stage for identifying some configurational route for creating values in working space. But we have uh, like some examples here. So first uh, possible like scenarios for uh, different tenant types for individuals, the op open workspace and sense of communities 